Hello, hello. I am uh, getting my act together. Hello, um, I'm Stacy, and I am a pleasure and body love advocate. Um, some might call me a coach. That word doesn't resonate very much for me. Um, my website is StacyHerrera.com. And this is, I've done a few scopes, but it just hasn't been my jam and I'm trying to get my act together. So thank you guys for joining me. And um, what I'm about to tell you is really, really important. So hi, Tori. Um, make sure that you invite your friends um, and let them join us too, especially if they are women, if they are mothers or want to be mothers, um, get them on this scope because it's that important. So I'm going to give everybody a few more minutes to hop on and join me. It's probably not the best weekend to scope. I know a lot of people are, um, are getting ready to leave for the long weekend here in the States. So, but there's no time like the present, right? So anyways, how's everybody doing? Where's everybody um, viewing from? I'm here in almost sunny California. It's not very sunny today but it's usually sunny. Memphis, Pennsylvania, hello. Hi, Mor Hi Morgan. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me, Tori. Like I would not be on this scope if it wasn't for Tori Pasillo. Look, I even said your name right this time, Tori. <laughs> I, um, Staten Island, Iowa, look at the states are in the house. Yay. Well, it's, it's normally sunny here. It's kind of overcast. Um, I was going to do a scope outside, but because it's not very sunny right now, I'm in my bedroom. Thankfully, I've got this great um, skylight, so um, the lighting is still pretty good because it's still, it's still pretty daytime here. So I'm just going to get started, and hopefully um, you guys will share this scope and get your friends to watch it. And we will, uh, and they can catch the replay. So, and thank the replayers. Thank you guys for, for showing up because I'm confident everyone is going to love what I'm about to say. So um, I have a little story to tell. So the other day I was in Target, the red store. Everybody loves the red store, right? I was in Target and there was, um, I watched this exchange between a father and his daughter. And the little girl, the, the father was pushing the cart and there was, um, he had a baby in the front and the mom was on the side of the cart and they had this really big box in, in the cart. So he couldn't see what was in front of him, but his daughter was, um, his young, older daughter was underneath the cart. And when he stopped the cart, the little girl got out of, out of the cart. So she was kind of in front of the cart, but he couldn't see her. So when he got ready to move, he kind of ran her over with the cart. And I um, mean, it was, it was an accident. He did not mean to do it. Um, but I watched him and he was so shaken. Like he was very physically having an emotion about it. Um, and she was kind of balled over. And, and so then he said, he said, um, you know, be tough, be tough. And, and you shouldn't have been under there anyway. And so the little girl like looked up at him and there was like this moment of recognition, this moment where she like recognized that it wasn't safe for her to feel. It wasn't safe for her to feel the pain in her body. It wasn't safe for her to cry. It wasn't safe for her to have these emotions. And for him, he was having a hard time feeling how he felt about his daughter being injured, especially because she was injured by him, even though it was an accident. And it really made me sad because the little girl, like once she realized that she could not be sad, she like jumped up and just started running around like, like nothing happened, but she was hurt. I mean, if you've ever had the heel of your foot run over by a car, I know I have, and that shit hurts. So she was hurt, but she didn't, there was no space for her to feel how she felt. So I was really sad. It really bothered me. And the reason it bothered me because I recognized that that is when disembodiment begins. That is when we're that young, when we have been sold the idea that we are not allowed to feel anything that's tender because tenderness makes you weak. We've sold that idea to our sons. 
we've so and now it's been sold to our daughters and now we grow up being the kind of women that are hardened we're the kind of women that are not able to connect with our bodies we're the women who struggle to have orgasms we struggle to have orgasms because we're not feeling we struggle to have heart to heart conversations because we don't like to get tender so we can't ever be vulnerable we can't ever have the kind of relationships that we really want to have and it starts so young when someone plants the seed that it's not okay for you to be vulnerable. It's not okay for you to feel sad. You know, girls feel too much or we we tell our sons like don't cry like a girl because there's something wrong with crying. But when we start to do that, we become the kind of parents who cannot connect with our children. We become the kind of parents that are not able to be empathetic with our kids because we want them to move quickly out of discomfort. And the reason we want them to move out of the discomfort is because their discomfort makes us uncomfortable. So I thought this was such a really, really important thing for me to talk about because I, it happened to me as a kid, like, you know, straighten up, don't cry. You better suck up those tears before I give you something to cry for. Who, who's heard that? <laughs> like, I know you guys have heard that. So that was such a hard thing for me to watch because it really made me feel really sorry because I was like, this little girl is going to think it's not okay. She already knows. She wasn't even four. She might have been four. She couldn't have been older than that, though. But she already knew that it wasn't okay for her to feel. And that really, really broke my heart. So we have to stop. We have to stop disconnecting from ourselves. We have to stop disconnecting from our bodies. We have to get in touch with how we feel. And that means feeling the discomfort too. Because you can't say, I want to be happy and I want to feel good if you're not willing to sit with discomfort. Let me tell you, if you're not willing to sit with discomfort, you also can't sit with pleasure. So if you're one of those people that has a hard time and you want to move as quickly as you possibly can out of pain, you're also a woman that moves as quickly as she possibly can out of pleasure. Like that's real, that's the truth. So I, I think that this is such an important message. So it's the one thing that you have to stop doing. You have to stop avoiding your feelings and you have to stop encouraging your children to ignore their feelings. Stop telling them not to cry. Stop that shit. <laughs> stop telling them not to fucking cry. Let me tell you something about crying and why it's important. When a baby cries, when they're an infant, that's when, when they're young, we give them permission because, and that's only because they don't understand enough for us to stop them, stop it from happening, right? But when an infant cries, it will cry until two things happen. One of two things happen. It will cry until it just gets so exhausted that it goes to sleep or it will cry until it stops hurting. And but we become the kind of people after a certain age when we're told we're not supposed to cry anymore, then we stop doing it. And then we get all this emotion trapped in our bodies. And even when we do cry, we try to cry silently. Like I was that girl. <laughs> like I remember practicing tears in the mirror as a kid and trying to do it without an ugly face. Who can relate to that shit? Trying not to, because I didn't want to look ugly. Because I thought that there was something wrong if my face got all crumpled when I cried. But this is the thing. When you allow yourself to cry full out, ugly face and all of that shit, when you allow yourself to cry and you allow yourself to for the sounds to come out, you have to let the wailing happen. Then you release all of the tension, all of the emotion, and you're able to move on from that experience. But as soon as you start holding it in, as soon as you start trying to pretend like you're not tender and you have to keep those tears stuck inside, then for one, your throat chakra ends up fucked up. So you're hoarse all the time. <laughs> but you also end up replaying and reliving those same experiences over and over because there's this memory of it stuck in your muscles, stuck in your body, all because you didn't allow yourself to feel. So that's the one thing we have to stop doing. We have to stop pretending that we're not human. We have to stop pretending that we don't feel. We have to stop encouraging our children to stop feeling. If we really, really, really want to heal, like as not just as a person, but on a global scale, if we really want to heal. We have to start feeling our feelings because then we don't have to get all this anger built up in us. Then we can be the kind of people that can be compassionate to strangers. We can be the kind of society that does not, you know, target one race of people and call it justice. We cannot be those people anymore if we just give ourselves permission to feel. So that's my message. 
that is my message and I hope that it's I hope that you guys share it share this because it's that important and 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 on a on on a very um very small scale like doing this feeling your feelings will definitely it has a ripple effect when you feel your feelings you give people permission to feel theirs it allow your relationships will be more expansive because all that holding it in and keeping it back it makes you not be able to be vulnerable then you're not having any real intimacy not just in romantic relationships but you're not really being intimate with your friends and with your kids and with your family so just giving yourself that one gift that I can feel however I feel and there's nothing wrong with it and feeling tender doesn't make me weak it makes me human it makes me compassionate it makes me sexy because vulnerability is sexy as fuck. So anyways, that is my message. That's what I think that this this world needs so much more that we definitely, yes, sit with pain so you can experience pleasure. That's so, it's so huge. It's so huge. And you know, so often we want to move so quickly. We want to be finished feeling discomfort fast. We want it to just be over. But you know, have you ever found yourself having uh, having pleasure in the middle of sex and you and, and it gets really good and guess what you start doing? You start hurrying up because you now you, you want to just be finished. But does that make sense? Like, does it make sense for you to hurry out of pleasure? Um, we do the same thing with food. We like something and then we just all of a sudden we like it and then we start shoveling it and then it's it's like finished. So then it tastes good. And now you're finished eating because you hurried up. So that same like how we do one thing is how we do most things. So if you're hurrying out of discomfort, you're hurrying out of pleasure and you're not really living. That's not life. That is not a life. No matter what story you're making up and telling yourself, that's not living. So we have to stop doing that. So feel your feelings, even the uncomfortable ones, even the yucky ones, they come to teach you something. Pain is not a symptom. It's a signal. It's just saying like your body saying like, hey, can I have your attention, please? That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else. So just let yourself feel that. So I'm going to be scoping a lot more often <laughs> and I'm so grateful for you guys for tuning in and I hope that, you know, for those of you here in the States have a very happy Independence Day, but I also want you to really, really think about um, independence and interdependence because that is the real, the real expansion of independence comes from us uh, recognizing that we're interdependent. So um, that's my gift to you. Um, check my bio. I'm actually um, all over the internet. So follow me around. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. I, I can't even remember like how to stop a scope. Like <laughs> It's like you swipe down, right? Yeah, does, is, like you swipe down to stop. Thank you, Tori. Thank you for sharing and for for putting my website uh oh inside of the inside of the chat box. So I will see you guys next time. I'm gonna have another scope, another really really juicy topic to talk about um next week. So hit the in the hit the end broadcast thing. Where is that? Oh, there it is. Thanks. Okay, got it. Bye.